So, with us now being well into 2023, I've been spending a bit of time looking at how I want to train throughout the year. And with some cool things in the pipeline for summer, I decided I was going to spend the next few months dropping my overall calorie intake and leaning a bit more towards strength training than I have done for the past couple of months. So in this video, I thought I'd walk you through five key points I adhere to whilst cutting to maintain performance that may well help you should you be looking to do the same. All right then, so I'm about to get stuck into a upper body session with a little bit of split squatting just to work around a bit of a lower back niggle that I'm dealing with at the moment. But before I do that, I thought it would be important to lay out some foundations for us today. So I'm gonna give a very brief overview of how I and we at Omnia Performance recommend you manage nutrition as a hybrid athlete for performance. But if you want more detail and a real walkthrough of how to manage things from your end, then head to the video in the description down below where I'll talk you through things with plenty of examples in a PowerPoint presentation format so that everybody can have a good time. So the first thing that's important to do is establish a daily baseline. And the way to do this from my perspective is to input your details into the calculator below. When it asks how many training days you have a week, make those weight training days. And then for your step count, put those in as well as accurately as you can. And that will give you your daily baseline calories. Step number two, you can play around with the macronutrient variables. Again, if you want a bit more information on what I recommend, then head to the link in the description down below for the video where I do exactly that. But once you've got that, you can give yourself the numbers that you should be aiming for in line with your goals from a body composition slash body weight point of view. Step number three, and this is where we're quite unique, is to understand that you should be balancing the books because the baseline that PH Nutrition has given you here is not accounting for cardiovascular expenditure across the training week. So if you're trying to maintain performance as a hybrid athlete, balancing weight training with endurance training, then that daily baseline is the starting point, not the end point. So it means that on rest days, I'm eating my daily baseline. On days where I'm just weight training, I'm eating my daily baseline. Whereas when I'm doing a three hour, four hour bike ride and burning 2000 calories, I'm eating back 1800 calories on top of my baseline to make it 4,200, which means I can fuel effectively for my bike ride. I can eat as I go and I can fuel for my performance. So that's a brief overview. All the links and information you'll need are in the link in the description down below. Hopefully that gives a good foundation for us to work off so that I can get started with my upper body session. Right, so hopefully you have enough of a foundational understanding at this point for us to move into the rest of the video. And the first thing to mention with that in mind is the importance of separating your sessions and planning your day effectively. For instance, today I was up at my usual time, took the dogs on a walk and sort of got ready for the day and then was at my desk working for seven, knowing that I am going to be training my upper body session at lunchtime rather than first thing in the morning as I normally would were I not in a calorie deficit or on a cut. Because I would rather have the carbohydrates from my breakfast at about 8 a.m. this morning in my system ahead of my upper body session than doing my normal first thing a.m., last thing after work, p.m. training session were I in a calorie surplus or maintenance. Because with restricted calories, my general performance will be a bit compromised. So I know from experience I'll feel a bit groggy if I go into any heavy sessions fasted. So therefore, if I can shuffle my day to allow for carbs in my system prioritize around the training sessions that I do have, then my performance will be better off. So from your end, if you have the ability to be able to plan your days effectively so that you can be tactical about how and when you use your fuel and your calorie intake effectively to fuel those sessions, you will be able to make those sessions more quality focused and the calorie deficit restricted consumption won't affect you as much as it otherwise might. Okay, so session complete and I'm gonna have some food, funnily enough, who could have seen that coming? I've got some cooked chicken, already cooked, as is in the name, with some sweet corn, some light mayo, two bagel thins and some lettuce. Not particularly exciting, but I didn't promise it would be, so you can't really complain. This way I'm getting some food in straight after my training, which means I can sort of improve my recovery overall from it. I can get some carbs in me that are a little bit depleted at the moment ahead of my swim this evening. So that way, as I said earlier, I'm using the limited carbohydrates that I have access to in a deficit whilst on a cut, tactically around my training so that my performance can be as optimal as possible within compromised conditions. So whilst I work my way through said bagels, it's important to mention that you should be tactical with your nutrition. And whilst I've already touched on that in some ways already, if you get that wrong, it could end up as ugly as Harley 
currently looks after I gave her a bit of a makeshift shave because all the groomers were booked until May. Sorry, Harley. So there's three real components to what I mean by this. So first and foremost, it is important to be considerate of your meal timings, as I've already mentioned with when you're managing your carbohydrates around training for performance. So if you're on restricted calories, you only have so much energy to consume within the day. So make sure you're using it efficiently to give you the best fighting chance of performing during those sessions. Secondly, make sure you're focusing on foods that are satiating, which is why I'm having bagel thins rather than two big bagels, because in terms of the calories consumed versus the satiation acquired, having two smaller carb sources with the same protein filling effectively fills me up as much as it otherwise would, but for less overall calories. So play around with satiation, play around with different food types and find what works for you. Point number three is to pay attention to micronutrition as well. And whilst the, the sort of measly servings of lettuce and sweet corn that I have in here isn't exactly doing that right now, with my main meals in the evening, I'm having a lot of vegetables at the moment because they're satiating, they're good for my immune health, and they just make me feel a little bit better on a day-to-day -day basis. Plus you get to tell your mom that you've been eating lots of colorful fruit and veg. Obviously nutrition is at the center, the core of all my training. It goes without saying, as it should be with yours. But when I'm on a cut, when I'm in a deficit, it's important to emphasize the finer details as they can really stack up over time. The way I approach a deficit is you want it to be as sustainable and manageable over a longer period of time, because that means your compliance will be better. So it's important to focus on the finer details, make sure you're focusing on satiation, make sure you're being tactical with your nutrition timing, and make sure you're using that fuel efficiently, because that way you're making the cut more manageable, you're performing better, you're feeling better, and overall you're making a potentially unpleasant, difficult experience a little bit more manageable. Okay, so it's just gone half three and I am dressed and ready for a swim. And if you are wondering whether I regularly kick about at my desk in some neoprene, then you would be correct. For today's next point, I'm going to cover something you might well not expect, and that is not to rely on caffeine. Now we all know somebody that heavily relies on caffeine and I'm not saying that caffeine's a bad thing, by no means at all. I utilize caffeine regularly and strategically, but that is the important point. And by that I mean don't fall into the trap of replacing poor meal timing, poor allocation of macronutrients and poor planning with a 4 p.m monster because that's going to affect your sleep that's going to affect your recovery and you're then going to get into a cycle of tiredness where you then supplement with caffeine which then affects your sleep which then makes you tired which then means you supplement with caffeine which then affects your sleep which then makes you tired which means you then supplement with caffeine so use it strategically use it as an appetite suppressant in the morning use it as something to perk you up and give you energy in the morning but make sure that you're structuring your day effectively in terms of meal timing around your training when to use this strategically rather than just having it as a toolbox that you spray from the hip and are riddled with headaches anxiety jitters and poor sleep because that's not actually going to add any real additional benefit to being in a deficit which is already fairly uncomfortable so be strategic use it well and i'm glad we got that on the first take because we only had two cans of monsters to do that with goodbye And we have landed at Gladhouse Reservoir in a very typical British rainy, cold, wet day. Six degree water temperature, a little bit colder than it normally would be at this time of year, so I'm a little bit apprehensive as this is my first open water swim in a while. But nonetheless, moving on to point number four, which is a theme I discuss often on this channel, about as often as I complain about British weather, in fact, and that is having structure to your training because clear goals require clear strategies and clear strategies create clear structure. And with structure, you can plan and work around a lot of the points I've made already today. You know your working patterns, you know your social patterns, you know what you do at the weekend, and therefore you can plan your food and make it efficient as well as know when to look forward to certain things. Like I look forward to specific foods that I enjoy on my big low intensity steady state zone two Saturdays, whereas you might decide taco Tuesdays is your thing and you can factor that in by having a plan. If you are absent of a plan and would like to focus on some form of hybrid training, then you can save yourself 25% off until the end of March with the code March25 at Omnia Performance. Link is in the description down below. So you can reduce the size of your investment down below and I'm about to reduce the size size of my down below.
Swim complete and managed a kilometer in six degrees Celsius water, which is the coldest I've been in for a while. I was looking for probably a little bit longer in there, but 1K was all I could manage at the moment. So final point is really just to kind of emphasize a lot of what I've already said today, which is the importance of balancing the books from a performance point of view, because the mistake that a lot of people make when working in more endurance training is if you've got used to knowing what your maintenance is over so many years coming from a gym background and you start adding in running, you start adding in swimming, biking, whatever it might be, then you might inadvertently put yourself into a huge deficit by not accounting for that additional expenditure, that additional output. So it's important to know how much you're eating, also how much you're burning so that you can recalibrate on a daily or a weekly basis. As I mentioned earlier, and as I mentioned in this video up here somewhere and linked in the description down below. I can break this down in more detail for you if you want to break things down for yourself. I like to do things on a daily basis, but if you've got a predictable training schedule, you can map out the week and eat the same amount every day. But I've burnt about 300 calories there, so I'll probably eat back an additional 250 today on top of my baseline intake. That way, I'm not outworking what I'm eating and I'm instead fueling for performance while still being in a calculated, sensible deficit that allows me to continue to perform, adapt and train at a significant output. So hopefully that all makes sense. Some big top line points to consider there. If you do have any questions on anything I've mentioned today, then please do drop them in the comments down below. However, if they are answered in the video that I've referenced several times throughout this video, I will just troll you in the comments and tell you to go and watch it there. So expect disappointment if that's the approach you're going to take other than that please share your thoughts and feelings down below make sure to have liked the video and that you have subscribed and i will see you next time too tired to give a fuck but nice I'll show you a clip just so you're not showing off too much